Good evening, everybody. Happy birthday. You're all looking at me like, what is he talking about? You didn't know it, but you guys, I look out there, you're 2,000, you're over 2,000 years old. Right? It's the birthday of the church. Turn to somebody next to you and say, happy birthday. Yeah. There's a global celebration going on. Not only a global celebration, a cosmic one, a heavenly one. Because today the heavens are rejoicing at what Jesus Christ has done in obedience to his Father, in winning salvation for those who bear the image of the Father. We celebrate tonight the culmination of Jesus' great work. You ready to celebrate it? Yeah. All right, so I've got two. You might be wondering why I have two of these, because it's going to be a super long talk, okay? The outline has to go all the way across. I asked for a third, but they thought it might be too intimidating. But you're ready for that, aren't you? Yeah. All right. Okay, praise the Lord. Somebody's talking to me over there. By the way, hello everybody online, welcome. I want to say hi to Dave's mom too, I haven't seen you in a long time. You're looking good tonight. Good to see you. <laughs> Let me tell you where I'd like to start. I want to start with the ascension. How many of you celebrated the ascension this last week? Yes, 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 so beautiful. And the realization, and just take a little bit of time to kind of set aside our hopes and concerns, our personal hopes and concerns for the night. The Lord has you on his agenda tonight, so you can set it aside. You don't have to worry. He's got a plan for you tonight and for, for me. But the Holy Spirit wants you and I, wants to help you and me to be able to perceive, to discern, to experience, and to grasp the beauty and the majesty of Jesus Christ the Lord. Because today we want to kind of celebrate with the Holy Spirit because this is the Holy Spirit's special day. But when you celebrate with the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit wants to do is he wants to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ. And he wants to communicate to us as we see the beloved Son and understand what he's done for us and why he's done it. He then wants to communicate to us the love of the Father. You ready for both of those? All right, I'm going to start first with some things, some jewels from the catechism. And you'll have to help me out tonight. So the catechism describes the unfolding of God's plan and what we want to celebrate tonight. Paragraph 670 of the catechism. Since the ascension, God's plan has entered into its fulfillment. We are already in the last hour. Already the final age of the world is with us. Christ's kingdom already manifests itself, its presence through the miracles and signs and wonders that come through the, proc the proclamation of the church. So turn to somebody next to you and say, we're in the last hour. We're in the last hour. Yes, we're living between, tell them we're living between the two comings of Christ. This is the age of the church. Pretty good. This is the age of the? This is the age of the? Yes. yes. Pretty good. Pretty good. Paragraph 665, I'm going to tell you, you might want to write these down. Christ's ascension marks the definitive entrance of Jesus' humanity into God's heavenly domain. Wow, that was really powerful. <laughs> Let me read it again. Christ's ascension marks the definitive entrance of Jesus' humanity into God's heavenly domain. Think about that for a minute. Jesus became one of us so that he could make it possible for a race of people that bore the image of God, that was created for God's glory, but fell from God's glory and became alienated from God, cut off from our destiny, 
and to, to inherit a future without hope. And God sent forth his only son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, his beloved son. He sent his son into the world to take on human flesh. So that through walking through the earth in human flesh, bearing our lady's flesh, the, the blood of our lady running through his veins, becoming one of us, heaven and earth came together in Jesus. And he walked the earth, brothers and sisters, and he gave to God what belongs to God, what no one else had ever done. He gave to God what belongs to God. What did he do? He fulfilled the first commandment. He loved God with all his heart, all his soul, all his mind, and all his strength. One of us, the second Adam from the earth in God's creation, finally gave to God what belongs to God. From a heart, from a human heart, God the Father was loved on this earth from a human heart the way he deserved to be loved. And then Jesus proved his love and showed us something that's it's so important and precious for us to be able to grasp about our own life. He revealed to us what love is. And this is what the world right now is really mixed up about. There's a lot of talk about love, isn't there? It's like love is love, right? Everybody's trying to define love. Everybody's trying to express love. And it's already been defined and it's already been expressed by the perfect man who walked on our behalf and he loved perfectly. And Philippians 2, the great hymn to his glory says this. He emptied himself taking the form of a servant, becoming like you and me. Right? He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. He defined love. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, in my Father's economy, in all the heavens, all the angels, the whole cosmos obeys his commands, except those creatures that are in this little tiny blue planet floating around among 200 billion galaxies, these little people who march around like they know everything, like they're in charge of everything, they bear his image. The cosmos was made for his glory. It was made as a gift for us, but all we can think about is our little world and our little self-importance. We're totally preoccupied with ourselves. Our gaze is fallen, and while the heavens declare the glory of God, while the angels Angels are absolutely at this moment just singing and the saints are glorifying on this night celebrating the victory of Jesus and his kingship and his exaltation in glory. They're all celebrating it and on the earth we're watching TV. You know what I mean? Or we're fighting or we're arguing. The most important thing going on in the planet tonight is that God's people, weak and broken people like you and me, we're celebrating by the mercy of God. We know, even in our broken sinfulness, we know what he has done. And we have the privilege to stop and to acknowledge the glory and majesty of Jesus, the Father's beloved Son, who now sits at his right hand. He's reigning in glory. And when he died on a cross and he gave to God what belongs to God, John 14, chapter, chapter 14, verse 30, is maybe one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. Jesus is talking to the apostles and he says, that intimate Last Supper discourse, he's speaking to them and he said, I won't be with you much longer. And they're looking. What do you mean? He said, because the devil's coming after me, just like he's come after everybody else, probably more intensely toward the Lord, but every human being that he enslaved. And Jesus said, but the devil's coming after me, but don't worry about it. Here's what I want you to know, my friends. What's going to happen, this is my, I'm describing what he's saying there. This is my translation of it. He said to the apostles in that moment, the devil's not in control. He's the God of this world, and I'm about to bring down his kingdom forever. Yeah. 
And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it by calling down all the angels that I could. All I would need was Michael to come and a flick of my finger, and he could handle the whole thing. But no, my father has a different plan, and I love my father. And here's what Jesus said, his exact words. Here's what I want you brothers to know. He said, I'm going to do what I'm going to do because I want the whole world to know I love the father. That's what he's saying right there. And he's telling us, I'm on this cross freely because my, I do all that the Father commands me to do, he said. And in that, I show everyone for all eternity that I love the Father. And what is it that conquers, this brings down the kingdom of the enemy? What is it that saves the human race? It's the love of God and the burning heart of Jesus Christ, first and foremost for his Father. And he's telling us, and he told us, this is the first and the greatest thing. To love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And finally, there was a human being, a human person who did it. The God-man. And Philippians 2 says, therefore, say with me, therefore. Therefore. God has highly exalted him. And given him the name that is above every other name in heaven and on earth and under the earth. He's been exalted, brothers and sisters. And that's what we're celebrating at part tonight. When Jesus went home to the, could you imagine? We hardly think about it. When he rose from the dead, we talk about the resurrection a lot. Obviously, you know, Christianity is the resurrection from the dead, but it's one movement back to the Father. Jesus took on human flesh and destroyed everything that separates us from God by becoming one of us, giving to God what belongs to God, so the second Adam, Jesus, could go home with human flesh. So when he ascended to the right hand of God the Father, and he came back home, and the gates were lifted, and all the angels were waiting, they were absolutely stunned. He came back in human flesh. And he was glorified at the right hand of the Father. He sat on a throne and he's sitting on the throne today. And guess what? Because he's there in his glorified flesh, you have a future and I have a future. He began the new creation. That's it. Nobody else could do that. Buddha couldn't do that. Mohammed can't do that. Bill Gates can't do that. Elon Musk can't even do that. Nobody but Jesus Christ can do that. Because in his flesh, brothers and sisters, do you understand the destiny of human flesh was headed for eternal condemnation? We had no hope in this world. And he entered the world and he took this race of people that were alienated from God, had become God's enemy and lived without hope. And he took on our our sinful flesh. And he died on our behalf. And he gave to God on Peter Herbeck's behalf what God deserved from Peter Herbeck. But Peter couldn't do it because he's fallen. But Jesus loves Peter so much, he wrapped his arms around me. He identified himself with me. And his love is united to my weak love. And he takes me right into the presence of God the Father. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, he's filled with glory. Father, tonight, oh, Father, we're going to yield our hearts tonight to begin with to the movement of the Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who comes, the catechism tells us based on Scripture, to manifest Jesus in his Lordship to us. Because we see in him And if we let the Holy Spirit do, if we just lift our eyes, brothers and sisters, a little bit from our own anxieties and our own concerns and our own fears, and we let the Holy Spirit lift our hearts and animate our spirits and allow us to see the beauty and majesty of Jesus Christ, it, it sets us free. You know why? Because we see our future. We see our destiny. Do you believe me? Okay, there's four people here who do. We're getting there. This is a tough crowd, Father. This is a tough crowd. (laughs) 
I need some more notes. Could you give me some more notes up here? No. Yeah. There's a great psalm, Psalm 145. It extols the greatness of God. Right? It begins this way. I will extol you, my God and my King, and I will bless your name forever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever. It goes on to say, I will recount your wonderful deeds and the splendor of your majesty. Your wondrous works, upon them I will meditate. He goes on to say. And he said, I will speak of your glory and I will bless your name. And I will declare your victory, says the Lord. Now, this is I think a very helpful little plan for us in these difficult times when everybody's arguing and fighting and I think there's a lot of negative talk out there and it's kind of like a heavy blanket and it affects us, doesn't it? It affects your mind. Here's what, here's what the Holy Spirit wants to help you with and this is why you're the light of the world and the, whole, and the church, if the church follows our lady in this, I'm going to show you what she does because she did this very thing. You meditate on what he has done for us. You chew on it. You ask the Holy Spirit to show you. And then when you begin to see it, with your mouth you say, Lord, I bless you. I bless you for your victory. I bless you for your salvation. I bless you for your glory. I bless you for your promises. Say with me, I bless you. I bless you, Lord. And then you declare with your tongue to someone else the goodness of God. Listen to Our Lady. We sang about it. My soul, she went to her cousin, and she looked into her cousin's eyes. Imagine doing, think of a cousin, all right? Imagine you doing this, going to your cousin and saying, oh, she says, hi, and you look at her and you go, my soul magnifies the Lord. She'll look at you like you're nuts, right? My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. I'm, he, magnifying is acknowledging, celebrating, discerning, you know, rejoicing in. So she's magnifying the Lord, right? So she says, I'm, I magnify the Lord and my spirit rejoices in me because he's regarded me, he's thought about me. And then she says, the mighty one has done great things for me. He's done great things for me, and holy is his name. And so today, brothers, tonight, we can say, yes, Father, we we magnify your beautiful son. And he wants us to do that, but what he wants the Holy Spirit to help us with tonight is you take the next step with Mary, and you're not just looking up, but you're saying, part of it is I'm not only wondering at God, the wonder of God, but he's done great things for me. And I'm a wonder. You know what? Just like Mary, he has come to live in me. You are a wonder. Turn to somebody next to you and say, you're a wonder. (laughs) Tough crowd. Tough crowd. Doesn't even believe it. You don't even believe it. You don't even believe it. Lord, help their unbelief, Lord. Help their unbelief, Lord. Come Holy Spirit. Okay, you need some homework then. This is remedial. (laughs) Where's the clock? All right, I got an hour left. Good. Sounds good. Okay, I'm going to help you now to understand why you should get up every single day and you should say to yourself, the the, the Almighty has done great things for me. Yeah, my bank account's tough. Yeah, I've got got an achy back. Everything isn't working right, but I'm going to magnify the Lord. I'm going to get into God's storyline for my life. I'm going to do a narrative that comes from the mouth of my God. That's what I'm going to do. And that's how I'm going to live. I'm not going to live in a fallen, I'm not going to walk around in a fallen world and repeat all the lies and the anger and the division and the separation and the darkness and the depression and the discouragement. You can do that all you want. The devil will stand there and he'll talk to you. God, your king, Jesus Christ, your Lord, has a question for you tonight. Do you want to stop living that way? And do you want to talk his narrative for your life? Do you want to sing his praises every day? Do you want to declare the victory that he's given to you? That's what the world needs from the church. That's what the world needs from the church. And I know 
uh, yeah, I'm even talking all the church arguments and the church divisions. This guy, these guys don't like that cardinal, don't like that way to celebrate. And the devil loves it when we do that all day long in our self-importance. Just as long as you don't pay attention to what God has done for you and what he's done in you and who you are. Because when you do, you come alive. The devil can't touch you. You become a solution to the problem and you help bring down his kingdom. That's a fact. That's a fact. That is a fact. We walk around discouraged like slaves and self-pity and all the negative energy of the world. Why do we do that? Because we don't know the Lord. They're all shaking. I don't know, but I do it. I don't know. <laughs> what are you, nuts? I don't know, but I do it every day. You know? All right, let's do a real, we're going to do a little bit of, I'm going to help you with God's word. God's word will help you. Okay, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. The apostles always begin their letters with telling us what God has done for us before he, they call us to do what God wants us to do with our lives. Do you get it? All right, putting first things first. I'm bound to give thanks to, all, to God always for you, brethren, beloved by God. Turn to somebody next to you and say, you're the beloved. Come on, look him in the eye. Okay, wow, you guys really like this part. Wow, wow. Yeah, now, now turn to somebody next to you and say, I'm the beloved. Yeah, yeah, you're preaching now. The men love this, don't you guys? I do this at men's conferences and I say, brothers, look deeply into your eyes, all right, each other's eyes. And say, you're the beloved. <laughs> they love it. Yeah. All right. The beloved, number one. Number two. Why are you the beloved? Because God chose you. Say, I am, I am. Chosen. chosen. I am, I am. Beloved. beloved. I am, I am. Chosen. Now tell someone next to you, I am chosen. I am chosen. Look the other way and say, you're chosen. Preach the word of God, church. Let it come out of your mouth, all right? All right. Say what God says. Watch what happens in a family and in a marriage and friendships when you say what God says and you live according to his truth and his power. It'll change your relationships. It'll change the atmosphere of your home. Miracles will happen. I can tell you I grew up in an alcoholic home where we had lots of shame and pain and the rest of it. And by God's mercy, we got, we got a hold of this by some crazy charismatic farmer who prayed over my sister and gave her a word of knowledge and it went through my family like a current of grace, like Pope Francis said. Weak and broken people, Germans on top of it, right? <laughs> Stubborn Germans. Okay, you're beloved and chosen. We're not even through the first sentence yet. Okay, you're chosen from the beginning to be saved. Say, I am, I am. Saved. saved. I am? Saved. Turn to somebody next to you and tell them you're saved. Okay, okay. We hardly knew each other five minutes ago. Now I know you're beloved, I know you're chosen, and you're saved. But you're saved the Catholic way. Not once saved, always saved. You're saved, right? You have been saved, you are being saved, you will be saved, right? And then Paul, we're not even at the end of the first sentence yet. <laughs> Paul goes on to say, how were you saved? By sanctification. 25 cent word, brothers. Okay. What's sanctification? To be set apart for God, right? Turn to somebody next to you and say, I'm sanctified. I'm sanctified. Come on, say it again. I'm sanctified. I'm sanctified. Yeah. And I'm saved. And I'm, saved. And I'm chosen. And I'm beloved. Woo! 
That's who we are. All right. And he sanctified you for belief in the truth. No, did he say my truth? Did he save me for my truth to design my own self and my own reality? No. He is the truth. Okay? You were set apart by God to live the truth. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. And now that's the end of the sentence. And then he goes on to say in the second sentence, to this he called you through our gospel. How were you called to being beloved, chosen, saved, and sanctified through the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glad tidings we've been talking about? This is why the church is called, this is why the church is the only light of the world. This is exactly what all of humanity needs. That's why it's so despairing and so discouraged and so lost. And instead of having burning compassion and love for the troubled craziness in the world, we get angry every night because we watch four hours of news, right? And we just get one after another after another. And you go to, you go to bed with a headache, right? And you're angry and you hate another politician, right? And you just want bad things to happen to people. They're stealing my country. They're doing this, that. I hate those people. Come on, tell the truth. There's a priest here. There's a priest here. Because why? We're so fallen. And we just talk like it. And we just go back. We're just like... I mean, it's like my dad's old alcoholism. He just kept going back to it. You just keep going back to the same time. Oh, honey, the world. Oh, my God, what happened to the world? Click the channel. Oh, and the church, too. Oh, my God. Oh, right? I mean, that's really where we are. Turn off the tube. Except for EWTN choices we face. Okay, now you were given all this, and the good news for this is the this is the nugget, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say to somebody, I'm going to glory. I'm going to glory. Say it again, I'm going to glory. I'm going to glory. I'm going to glory. Because Jesus Christ has saved me through his death on the cross, through the shedding of his blood, and the rising from the dead, and his ascension into glory, and the outpouring of the Spirit, and he gave it to me in baptism, and I was born again. Turn to somebody next to you and say, I'm born again. You are born again. You're the, you're the new creation who acts like you're dead. I mean, literally, friends, the key for us, it's not, it's not complicated. It's just hard because we're weak and broken people filled with self-love and filled with, you know, this, that, and the other thing. But greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. It's true. It's true. Friends, we're living at at an epic time in human history. There are things happening now that that have never happened in human history. We could be in the end times. Father, Father, I'm not saying we are. I'm just saying... We don't know. But if this isn't the end times, this is an incredible dress rehearsal. (laughs) Because the fundamentals are under massive assault. What is a human? What is the family? What? What is marriage? When does human life begin? Right? There's a war going on over abortion still in our country, and the men and women who want to abort, it's easy for us to hate them, but don't ever hate them, because they're in darkness. 
Because the devil is the king of this world and he's been sacrificing human beings from the beginning. He's bloodthirsty. I know that's a depressing thing to say. He's wicked and he's evil and he hurts all of us. And we, God looks at all of us, everybody, with mercy, with tenderness, with forgiveness. Jesus knows who we are. He knows how deeply I've sinned. I broke a lot of the biggest commandments, friends. Not yesterday, but it happened at one time in my life. You know? Serious sin. And I'm not boasting in it. But God's mercy comes to forgive us, to heal us, all of us, right? Amen. That's why he shed his blood. He's not surprised at what we've done. I mean, a good priest once told me when I was having a hard time spitting out a hard sin, you know, in confession, ever happened to you? I always look for a blind foreigner when I go in. <laughs> I gotta be honest. <laughs> and it was a serious one. He looked at me and he said, Peter, here's one thing. He was behind a curtain and he even understood who I was. I said, Wait a minute, how'd you know? <laughs> I had a bl plastic nose and glasses on and everything, and it didn't, <laughs> nothing worked. And he said, Peter, one thing you'll never hear, hear from Jesus. Is Peter, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> You're the only one who's still surprised. He has come to seek and save the lost. Welcome to the human race. He does not come to condemn anyone, right? But he comes to save us. That's why he did all that. And it's for everyone. There's not one person here, not one, or listening, who's committed an unforgivable sin, who can't be forgiven, who isn't radically, passionately loved by God. No one's disqualified. No one's set, no one. The destiny Jesus won for all is for you. You are destined to share in the eternal glory of God. I don't care what you did if you've confessed your sin. He throws it in the sea of forgetfulness. And he puts a sign, Father John Bertolucci used to say, with a sign on the seashore that says, no fishing. And the devil always wants us to pick it, pick it back up, pick it back up, see what you did, see what you did. And brothers and sisters, I mean, it's happened to me a lot in my life. And if, if I didn't know the word of God, this is the offensive weapon. This is where I say, no, 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 no. That's a lie. That's a lie. And I speak it. I'm forgiven. God has forgiven me. I'm the beloved son of God. And then something in me is like, no, you have to agree. We get into the devil's narrative and we agree with him. Yeah, I'm not very good. Yeah, and then shame sets in and all that kind of garbage, you guys. Or gosh, if there's some sins in me like, oh, man, uh, if someone knew, if anybody knew some of what I've done, I just can't. So I, I remain isolated. I remain alone. I just remain there because this is it's all a lie. It's a total lie. Friends. And God wants us to be able to look at one another through the mercy in his eyes, mercy to mercy, tenderness to tenderness, forgiveness to forgiveness, so people can open up their hearts, and they can, they're not afraid of being rejected or hated, whatever. You know what I mean? Okay. I am, I am. Beloved. beloved. I am chosen. chosen. I, am I am saved. saved. I, am I am sanctified. sanctified. I, am I am going to glory. Going to glory. Let's stand up and thank the Lord. Let's stand up and thank the Lord. Yeah. Okay.
Let's praise the Lord, you guys. Let's thank him like King David. Let's be like King David. Let's just take off our clothes and let's run around like a bunch of crazy people. No, 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 no. Let's just stand. Let's praise the Lord. As Bob's coming up, let's praise the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. He's exalted. The Lord is exalted. He's the king. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Blessed be God.